City on the edge. City on the edge. City on the edge of the river. On the edge of New Mexico. City on the edge of New Mexico. City on the edge of Santa Fe. City on the edge of Bernalillo <laughs> County. City on the edge of war. City on the edge of hash. <laughs> City on the Welcome edge of life. City on the edge of death. back to City on the Edge podcast, the podcast where we tell Albuquerque's stories. Uh, I'm Ty Bannerman. I'm Nora us. Hickey. I'm Mike Smith. And uh, joining us today is a very special guest, Dave DeWitt, a.k.a. the Pope of Peppers himself. Um, welcome. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. And we are going to be talking about uh, green chili and other varieties of, uh, of uh, chili-like substances. We're going to be drinking a little green chili wine. It exists. It's good. I think let's, let's try it. Let's yeah. toast it. And mm -hmm. Cheers. Take a sip and let's give our impressions. Let's start with the expert, Dave. What do you think of green it's chili? It's very wine? mild. You can hardly even taste the chilies in it. True. And uh, my experience is that um, nothing can improve a mediocre wine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And uh, or beer, for that matter. Green chili wine has been roasted. <laughs> oh. All right. What about you yeah. guys? What do you think? It seems that it has the flavor, but not the spice. Oh, interesting. Well, and it's rather sweet. It's very mm -hmm. sweet. Very sweet. Yeah. I like it better than most wine. You know, that really? I, that, that I, yeah, interesting. Yeah. Well, it's like, you know, it's not my, that's not my drink, you know? <laughs> I'm not <laughs> wine, you know, I'm just, I'm just not uh, what is high your class drink? enough beer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but uh, I, I, I like, I think green chili improves anything. Everything I've ever scoffed at that has green chili in it, I'm like, I like this. <laughs> I, li I like this better now that it has green chili in it. Okay. Well, we've got the uh, yeah. spectrum of responses. But this guy's the expert. I'm just well, a philosopher. It's just an opinion. Likes to eat and drink. Well, let's uh, let's go ahead and mm. talk about uh, talk about you, Dave. Um, so you are the uh, the Pope of Peppers. You are a food historian and chili expert. Mm. You have published many books. Uh, how many books have you published? It's in the 50s. In I the 50s. Wow. Correct. And we've Whoa. got um, the Pepper Garden, the Hot Sauce Bible, the Chili Pepper Encyclopedia, the Spicy Food Lovers Bible, and the Complete Chili Pepper Book. Yes, and uh, I'll have a, no a new book out uh, next year um, by UNM Press. Okay. And it's called uh, Chili Peppers, A World History. Oh, excellent. Awesome. Cool. It's another food history book, but specifically on chili peppers. And it's a combination of historical research and my experiences traveling around the world um, investigating chilies, I guess you'd say. And when does that come out? It'll be out in the fall of next year, so about a year from now. Awesome. Great. It takes university presses a little bit longer to publish sure. than standard presses do, but that's okay. All right, so let's, uh, I feel like we need to start with the name Pope of Peppers. How does one become a Pope of Peppers? <laughs> um, it has to do with publicity and media people and, and finding a handle that they liked. And uh, Dennis Hayes, who was uh, working for Crossing Press and then um, Ten Speed Press, um, dubbed me that, and then the media picked it up and uh, it stuck. So, I mean, I'd like to say I invented it and, and self-promoted, but it was just out of my hands by that time, and so cool. I just go with it. it. Doesn't matter. And what got you into writing about uh, Chile in the first place? Oh, I, when I moved to New Mexico in 1974. I came out in July of 74 on a vacation and just fell in love with the state and uh, had to move. So I moved in November and I had some goals about the move. I had never been west of the Mississippi until July of 74 and it was like a whole new world and it was like being in another country but they still spoke English. So it was, uh, and I, my goal was that I would start my freelance writing career and I, all I had to do was find some subjects and I, I like to write about food and travel. And so I started writing about New Mexico food and travel and getting published in, um, you know, weekly newspapers. You've been that route. I have. And uh, uh, I realized that hardly anything was really known about uh, chili peppers. I mean, mm -hmm. there had been one book Gene Andrews wrote, uh, a big format book um, by the University of Texas Press on chili peppers, and it was a good book, don't get me wrong, but it was superficial mm. in a lot of ways. And I thought, well, I can, I can certainly use this as a starting point. And uh, uh, 
I ran into um, Nancy Gerlach. She and her husband Jeff had had the first video rental cassette place in really? town. Yeah, oh. and uh, I had a uh, there. There were no personal VCRs at that time, but I had a uh, three quarter inch VCR, and uh, and they had some of those some uh, cassette tapes that size, and then. Um, they were in the lead on uh, the home units and that kind of stuff. And uh, so I became friends with her, and she was a registered dietitian and um, loved chilies like I did. And so we decided that we'd write, write a book together. Mm -hmm. And awesome. uh, uh, I found an agent, and uh, uh, the agent sold um, the Fiery Cuisines was the, uh, the title of the book. It was just a survey of world chili peppers and recipes with them. Not too much food history, mostly just a cookbook. Mm -hmm. And uh, came out in hardcover by, um, let me see, it was um, St. Martin's Press. And it did very well. There was a British edition um, and then many paperback editions of that book. And um, then I went on to, with Nancy, we did 10 books together before she retired. Um, and. Uh, they were good sellers. I mean, mm -hmm. I, we weren't getting rich or anything, but we were making money, and it was interesting and challenging and uh, fun. Mm -hmm. And so um, we just started cranking them out. <laughs> and uh, I would just when you think that there's nothing else you can write about chili peppers, something happens. Something and, emerges. Right. There, there's another mm -hmm. angle that you look at it, and it's just sort of like, um, I mean... How many books do you think are going to come out on this impeachment thing? Oh, yeah. I mean, we've already seen the political thing and so many political books. And um, just as, you know, you think they can't write anything more about this, then there's some whistleblower or something right, comes right, up right. and it just recycles the whole thing. There's two of them now, yeah. yeah. And so um, I'm not saying that our books are political or anything like that. It's right. just an example. Um, of how you think a subject could be exhausted, but it never really is mm -hmm. exhausted. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I haven't counted the number of books that have been written about, written about Trump since he got elected, but uh, it's got to be 40 or 50, Yeah, I, yeah. I would think, that have Easily. come out, um, including that book, Fear, uh, right. Um, right. Oh. which I didn't think was all that great anyway. <laughs> I mean, it, it was covered so, so much in detail in the press. By the time I read it, it was anticlimactic. Right, sure, right. Sure. So I only got halfway through it. But... Uh, this is just an example of, of all the things on a certain mm -hmm. subject that can come up. That and does remind me of a question I have. Okay. What's the biggest chili scandal that you've covered or heard well, about? I don't know that it's a scandal, but um, the um, misnaming of chilies mm -hmm. as hatch oh, chilies is right. probably the one I've, I've been in court about. Well, I've, <gasps> I've, I'm an expert witness on that subject. Really? And so when I um, when I went back as the attorneys, it's the Hatch Chili Association versus the Hatch Chili Company. Mm. And it's oh. still in state court. And I got a call from the attorneys the other day if, if asking me if I was still on the team because I wrote a report that went to um, the Patent and Trademark Office um, a few years ago. And uh, I said, sure, I'll, I'll for, you know, for $300 an hour, I'll do it. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I'll do yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I charged them witness. that just because that was what my uh, attorney was charging me at the time mm -hmm. for another unrelated thing, and I just thought, well, I can sort of balance this. <laughs> well, go ahead. Well, I, I just was going to point out as, as part of our tasting today, I thought we'd we'd start maybe at the uh, the bottom. Uh, we have a can of Hatch Company chili. Uh, Mom, do you mind bringing that out, the, the can of chili and maybe some forks? We can give it a try. And you can tell us about the difference between chili from Hatch and Hatch chili. Okay, well, the problem is is that um, there's no variety of chili called Hatch. Right, okay. So uh, what are called Hatch chilies are four different varieties that are intermingled or however you would like to say it. Um, and uh, so that's very confusing to people. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. hatch is more of a marketing term than anything else now because oh, wow. hatch was easier to say than New Mexico green chili. Right. I mean, it's one one word versus four words. Now, would that be the proper name, you think, for a uh, Yeah, for green I chili? mean, uh, that's generically New Mexico green chilies, and they have uh, uh, 
uh, number six four. Um, they have Sandia. They have um, Big Jim, mm. and these any of those could be Hatch. Right. And they're all New Mexican green chilies, but th they were all developed. All those varieties were developed by New Mexico State University. Right. So um, Hatch is just a confusing term for for chili peppers. And I did a series of lectures um, at the Central Markets in Texas, mm -hmm. um, and my first, because uh, they have Hatch Chili Festivals with roasting and, uh, and sales and all that kind of stuff, and so um, I would start my lecture by saying there's no such thing as a Hatch Chili. Right. It's a misnomer that has become a marketing term, and uh, I mean, there's no Hatch Valley. It's the Rincon there's Valley. There's no Hatch Valley. Oh. There's no Hatch Valley. You're blowing my mind. I, I thought I knew what I was talking about. It's here. the Rincon Valley. Yeah, and then that that's no next way. to that's next to Doña Ana County, you know, uh -huh. and so um, it's it's confusing because the the Hatch Chili Association wants to limit um, the Hatch chilies to mm. um, eight eight different growers, none of whom are in Doña Ana County. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. So it's uh, it's they're in Socorro County. It's very strange. It's, it is very very strange, and they don't even include Luna County, mm -hmm. um, which is another big. Um, huh. chili growing operation and so um, that's what I was researching and testifying about and that kind of stuff um, and um, these, this, uh, these these chilies even from the Hatch Chili Company even though I'm technically working for them um, that doesn't uh -huh. mean I, that doesn't mean I have to like their product right <laughs> <laughs> it's good you have integrity and uh, most of these not too bad yeah yeah, it's okay. I was expecting worse, honestly. Like, the, I, uh, I haven't eaten them in a long time. These chilies generally are not roasted and peeled. They're, mm -hmm. they're not roasted. They put the chilies in a lye bath. Uh huh. L Y E. Whoa. To take the skins off. Okay. Because it, it's faster, easier. They don't have to have the roasters right. and all that kind of stuff. And so generally, these are uh, de skinned um, with lye, mm -hmm. which is completely washed off. Well, that's and good. The, the amount yeah. of the, the amount of lye in here is probably almost indetectable, okay. but well, still, yeah, it's not okay. roasted, and you don't have the roasted flavor. Right. Right. So, um, but the Hatch Chili Company predates and has um, trademark, but they don't have a plant patent. Oh, okay. Okay. And that's what the Hatch Chili Association is trying to do: is get a plant patent that says Hatch chilies are a specific um, agricultural variety hmm. right okay and they're not yes so they're saying it's not just grown in a certain place but actually a, a specific variety that's separate from others right okay but it's not and it's not right. so, so that's ba basically what I've been uh, oh, wow. writing about and when I when I researched and realized that I had been taken in Mm -hmm. by um, this whole thing <laughs> in my hatch. early days of writing I, I didn't <laughs> hadn't done enough research but then I was being paid to do research and so I really got serious about it and every it's a big uproar and controversy right and um, wow. uh, but I, I just like to be botanically accurate mm -hmm. and you know uh, horticulturally accurate about awesome. what's going on with this and uh, for a for a commercially manufactured product, this isn't bad. It, right. it does have yeah. Yeah. it has a, as as a, a low medium heat scale, mm -hmm. and uh, the flavor is okay, mm -hmm. and the texture is not bad either. Yeah. Right. Um, so, and I was under the impression that they weren't necessarily grown in New Mexico, although this is certified product of New Mexico. So it, it, they are grown in New Mexico. Okay, so they are in fact. Right. Um, I've never eaten it like salsa. <laughs> yeah, neither have I. This yeah. is, uh, yeah, it's not bad. Uh, no, it's yeah. not bad at all. It's great. Um, <laughs> and uh, I would say if you probably made enchilada sauce, a green enchilada mm -hmm. sauce out of this, um, it might not be detectable mm -hmm. from others mm -hmm. that were roasted in your backyard and all that kind of stuff. If you're hard up, you know, if you're in some other state maybe. And or you live in Uruguay or something. Yeah, there you go. Then <laughs> yeah. this is probably okay. Uh, that, yeah. So, so we're, we're not going to completely diss this. It's better than the wine. Oh, <laughs> Ooh, dang. That, well, that wine is going to take a beating yeah. today, I think. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> so uh, uh, let's, uh, let's back up uh, time-wise here. Let's go back to uh, where, where does Chile come from originally? Where does well, New Mexico Chile come from? 
Uh, New Mexico uh, chili was introduced by the Spanish about 400 years ago. Okay. Um, they say Juan de Oñate expedition mm -hmm. uh, introduced it, and uh, they said that the the natives, meaning uh, Native Americans, mm -hmm. had no chili, so we gave them seeds. Uh, that was in Juan de Oñate's uh, journal that he kept. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Well, and uh, so there were no chilies in New Mexico um, that were native until the Spanish brought them up from Mexico. Mm -hmm. And the, in the early days, there was no rhyme, no reason to the chilies. I mean, they weren't a specific variety. The pods could be any size, any heat. And um, so it was sort of haphazard. But starting around the turn of the 20th century, um, New Mexico State University um, started with Fabian Garcia. Um, he was the first Hispanic graduate of New Mexico State right. University, and he ran um, uh, their horticultural experiment, experiment station. Mm -hmm. And so he started um, breeding chilies to get a standardized variety, and in 1910 came out with um, New Mexico Number no. 9, right. which was the first um, chili that had been genetically engineered through not not a GMO chili, of right. course, but through st standard um, practices of breeding um, any kind of a plant. Mm -hmm. Luther Burbank started this whole thing. Mm -hmm. So he was following up with chilies, what Luther Burbank did with a number of different beans and things like that to standardize the variety so the farmers could know what they were growing and they would be all similar size, similar heat level, and similar yield. Um, uh, and he was, um, he's going to be honored by the national, let me see what it is, I can't, can't remember the exact yeah, type like the Agricultural Hall of Fame or something? Agricultural Hall of Fame, yeah. yes, in Kansas, uh, for doing this. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he joins other members that have been so honored in the Hall of Fame, like Thomas Jefferson. Right. Um, uh, there were three presidents, um, Abraham Lincoln and George Washington, all are in that Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. um, as well as um, a lot of famous uh, horticulturists going back in, in U.S. history. And, then and so th that's really a, quite an honor for the state of New Mexico and for Hispanics in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, now he was from Chihuahua, right? He, he, grew, he was born in Chihuahua, um, moved to the United States, um, uh, went to uh, New Mexico College of agriculture oh, and oh, okay. something else um, okay. uh, that was the precursor to New mm, Mexico State right University oh, okay. and then New Mexico State University became a land-grant college mm -hmm. um, and uh, he's um, he was the father of chilies in New Mexico right. awesome. and, and most of the varieties that we have today like the ones that I bought Sandia uh, Lumbre they're they're at least descended from New Mexico number nine to right. some capacity right in some okay. capacity yes mm -hmm. and um, uh, Roy Nakayama um, was a famous chili breeder, and uh, of course Paul Boslin, who's recently retired, is a good friend of mine and a co-author of, I think we've done four books together, mm -hmm. um, and he's recently retired. I don't know what he's going to be doing from now on, but I'll bet you it's consulting. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and uh, so they're, they're looking to replace him, and they have endowed a chair um, at the College of um, agriculture, consumer, science, it's called ACES uh, for the acronym, um, but they have a million dollars which generates enough money to endow a chair so they'll have a permanent replacement for Paul Boslin. Okay. Mm. So they've done a great oh. job down there of, of doing the that. The chili chair. Yeah, it's exactly <laughs> what it is. Um, and uh, so it, the advances continue um, and they're almost all done for, uh, to help growers. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've been successful with some, but um, there's some things that you just can't, um, say, breed against okay. successfully, like, for example, Phytophthora root rot. Uh -huh. uh, that's a fungus that is associated with agriculture all over the world, especially in the Western Hemisphere. And it, it means that you flood the roots with um, uh, too much water and a fungus grows and eats the roots essentially, right, consumes right. the roots and then you don't have a field anymore. It's mm -hmm. like when somebody 
flood irrigates their farm, and then there's a thunderstorm after that, and okay. the fields stay wet for, oh. for a week or so. Overwatering, essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. essentially. And uh, we don't see that much at home gardens because, you know, water costs money. So right, right. <laughs> we'd rather underwater than, than overwater. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, interesting thing for New Mexico all over in growing is that um, saline soils are a big problem. And we're not just talking about, um, you know, table salt. We're talking about all kinds of chlorides, um, uh, potassium chloride, and so, some sodium chloride. But those are salts too. And if your soil, I learned this the hard way because I had a, a bed that produced 300 pounds of tomatoes five years ago, and I didn't even get 10 pounds this year. Yes. So of course I had my wow. soil tested and found out that my salinity levels were about four times what they should oh, really? be. Wow. And so I had a buildup. Um, of salts, and that interferes with the plant's ability to take up nutrients and water, mm -hmm. uh, for that matter. So, um, the only way you can solve that is to flood irrigate um, and put one foot of water on your garden, and to, so all that wow. salts wash out. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing that, and uh, I've been, you know, shuddering at my water bills. But I've got, <laughs> I've got to do that; otherwise, right. I'd, I'd have to replace everything that was in the, uh, I have to replace all the soil, mm -hmm. and I don't have a front end loader. And so that would be very difficult to do. <laughs> yes. It, it, okay, we've got some more chili coming here. We've got some chili here. Let's, uh, let's bring it on up. Let's start with a, let's have some actual chili since we're talking about chili. Um, Can I how about the 1904? Oh, you brought different specific varieties? Yes. Awesome. I brought a little bag of organic stuff here from a co-op. Freshies of New Mexico. Can I ask a real beginner chili <laughs> sure, question? Of course, you can ask me anything. Um, so is heat determined by the variety, or is it determined through exposure to? I don't uh, know, it's sun? about half and half. Uh, chili heat um, uh, is it's genetic good. and also environmental. Hmm. And oh. uh, chilies that are stressed by the sun, by the wind, by a lack of water. Um, uh, they tend to be hotter, hmm. but yeah, they get uh, mean, is what I always heard. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> treat heard, them bad, they get mean. I heard that about the water, but not the rest of it. That's so interesting. Well, yeah. it's all it's all environmental, huh. and so we used to think that it was about ninety percent genetic, and now we think it's about fifty percent genetic hmm. and fifty percent environmental. Wow! Oh, wow. Uh, like you. Um, you know, well, if you if you maybe <laughs> the. Uh, the heat in chili peppers is probably the result of, um, uh, you know, the fact that birds have no response to capsaicin. Mm -hmm. And so the, the seeds pass through birds um, uh, intact. Oh. Whereas when mammals eat chili pepper, mm -hmm. they completely digest the seeds and ruin them. So mm -hmm. we, we think that. Um, the evolution of capsaicin in chili peppers had a lot to do with preventing mammals from eating them. Mm -hmm. wow. And oh. so... Um, we showed them. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, but, that, you, know, you, know, you know how things are. It's not all true. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had a cat that we, whenever we were cooking red chili on the stove, it would, it would dip its paw in the cooking chili and oh lick it off. Gosh. And I'd never seen anything like that. I was just totally amazed. Um, and then one year, um, the Department of Game and Fish um, allowed hunters to shoot deer out of season because they were ruining chili fields oh, wow. by eating the plants, including the pods, down to the ground. Wow. Uh, so it's not foolproof. Uh, no, it's not. It's not. I mean, when, when an animal gets hungry enough, it's going to eat whatever yeah, right. it can possibly eat. Maybe they like it too. That's weird. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's pretty strange. Yeah, so uh, what but we have here is a, a 1904 chili, a sandia, a lumbre, and then some mysterious red that I, uh, it was neither labeled and, and also I did not ask about it. Hmm. But I just thought we'd try maybe some of these. And so a 1904 chili, is this a... Uh, I don't know what 1904 yeah, chili okay. is. Yeah, okay, I'm kind of curious um, about these varieties. Individual farming operations will do hybrids mm -hmm. and name them something. Huh. Um, and when people ask me about them, I've never heard of it. A 1904. Right. I don't. I don't know what that is. I don't know where it came from. 
um, most of the time they are hybrids. Mm-hmm. In other words, they're not specific varieties that breed okay. through every time. Um, it's like if you take a uh, collie and, and uh, mate it with a uh, German Shepherd, you're right. going to get a hybrid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's a F1 hybrid, they're called. Oh. And by the time you get a variety, it has to be a, like an F10 or F12. It has to be several, yeah. many steps down. Yes. Because mm-hmm. um, that's the way you develop a variety that will breed true every time. Um, this, when you get hybrids, you just don't know what the what the uh, results are going to be. Um, and they won't breed true every time. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's not like going back to the original days when the chilies could be any size, any heat, um, any yield, and that kind of stuff. So but despite standardization, that's still a part of our chili experience. That well, yeah, of, I mean... As, as uh, people hybridize according to their own needs. They do. Yeah. They do, and then they name them something. Um, okay. And the name might not have anything... I mean, chili nomenclature is, is completely confusing anyway. Like right. For example, <laughs> um, the habanero chili is part of a species... Uh, it's called Capsicum chinense, which means from China. Oh. But that's completely huh. wrong. Uh, 100% not wrong. From China. They have nothing to do with China. <laughs> it was just that some breeder in the 1600s named the uh, species that because he had heard that they uh, came from China or something oh, like that. I see. And nobody's so ever changed these, it. Yeah. Um, they should be changed, but there's no, there's no official organization that can now change a species name. Interesting. Okay. I mean, who, who do you appeal to? Right. I, yeah, I don't even know. Maybe Ukraine. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, they seem to have all the answers. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't. I mean, I don't know. It's just. Uh, it's just. It's just weird. So That's how do you want to taste these? Yeah, things? let's see. Did you um, hear yeah, any details about these? Which one's well, the hottest? Well, okay, the Lumbre is supposed to be extra hot. I believe the Sandia is considered a generally hot. Yes. And then the 194 is considered mild. So, well, I wonder if we could get a knife. Some knives and, uh, and forks, maybe to cut with. Forks are down there. Oh, we got forks. Oh, we have okay, we got spoons, and we can just spoons, try forks, them as the needed. Um, so obviously, I didn't I didn't peel these, but they are roasted. So well, the, the skin's coming off of this. One. Exactly, so it should be fine. I was thinking I'd just take one and start eating. Go for it. Whatever yeah, you want to do. do. This is a mild one. Okay, we're gonna try a 1904. Mild. And the seeds carry the heat, right? No, the seeds. Oh. The seeds have no heat in them. They, um, the oh, the capsaicin is adsorbed, meaning on the surface, um, and so if when they're when they're processed, the seeds will seem hot because they're in. With the uh, placental, the placental tissue is where the capsaicin is, and it's also where the seeds are. So. Okay. Um, Th- they will get adsorbed. So they get, oh my gosh. And here Coated this whole time words. I thought that the, the seeds, seeds the are controlling the heat. No, placental tissue. Huh. That's gross. Mm-hmm. Hey, <laughs> it just well. sounds like a repulsive. <laughs> so far, so great. Oh, yeah, good. like in the 1904? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, I'm going to go a little bit hotter. You're going to go s- straight for the Sandia? Yeah. I think I'll start with a nice 1904 here. That's good. Very flavorful, but so, there's not much heat. These are from Sichler, Sichler, Sichler Farms. Right. Sichler Farms. That's where I buy all my chili. Mm. Oh, oh, gosh. That's and, hot. And don't even think about hatch because these are not grown anywhere near hatch. Right. These are grown five miles from Alabama. No, yes, yeah, so I was about to say, I know that that's one of the reasons I like them is they're, they're right here practically in town. I think they have a big farm down in Socorro. It's in Los, <coughs> Los Lunas. Oh my God. I think they have farms in both Los Lunas and Socorro. Just <laughs> this is both really loud, Mike. <laughs> Not your fault. But. I just want to warn you that's hot. I know you've tasted a lot of hot things in your life. But you that's that sandia. Intolerance. Okay. I'm going to try a little sandia over here. Oh, is that the next one? Sandia is the next level up, right. which you just tried, and you said it was really hot, right? Yeah. Are you okay, Nora? You look a little yeah. Do we need to get color the milk? than you were right. a minute ago. I, no, I'm okay. I can't give in yet. Whoever calls for the milk first loses. Calls for what first? The milk. The milk. We have milk in oh. the. Uh, this one's not been roasted, so if it's not roasted, <coughs> you just eat it as is, I guess. You can. Yeah. 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 Sandia is nicely hot. Nicely hot. Mm-hmm. Now we have to forgive Nora because she's from Minnesota. Wisconsin. I'm sorry. <laughs> Whatever. Hey, my my wife's from Wisconsin. <coughs> well, that one got you. Yeah, it did. and she loves it. Mm. Wisconsin mm. or chilies? Chilies. Mm. Ooh, that's a nice. Mm. I love them too, but I I thought I was stronger than this. I've been here <laughs> nine years. I've seen you eat some hot Mexican food. 
pretty spicy, I gotta say. <laughs> oh, oh, there we go. Ty's mom is really just brought an ice cream. Thank you. So nice. It's the hurry up ice cream. Yeah. Here's something human. Spoons for ice cream right here. I'd like some water. I want to get some water. Okay. We also have a. We have some. Oh, yeah. oh. green chili beer. Ooh, break one of those out. Okay. Well, that's hot. Mm. And the thing about a green chili heat, I feel like it is such a regular burn. It lingers and, and grows, is what I find. With yes. The, with the, with yeah, the it, it is growing. <laughs> like you think, oh, it's not so bad, and then, you know, it just keeps going. Want some milk too? I, would, I just want some water at some point. I want to, but I don't mind getting it myself. Oh, you um, can't because you're tied oh, to yeah, the table. Oh yeah, microphone thing. Um, but th yeah, if you would be willing, that'd be awesome. Thank you. Um, yeah, the sandia is definitely hot. Whew. This is like Pedro's salsa. If you buy that, this is the level that it is. Where I'm always like, this is a little hotter than I'm comfortable with. Yeah, but I love right, it. right, right. You know? Yeah, exactly. There's some. Uh, to me, it's like. I love the flavor, first yeah, of all. Yeah. Then the heat starts kicking in, and I start regretting it. Right. But then it's like it reaches a point of I'm actually kind of enjoying yeah, this yeah. intensity. I feel it in my shoulder <laughs> blades. I just love it. I feel, like, I feel it in my blood. All right. Doing all right, dude? Yeah. OK. <laughs> I'm recovering. Did you ever watch yeah. that show Hot Ones on YouTube? Have you seen that? I've seen it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the same idea. It's kind of a ripoff of it. I gotta warn you, this lumbre is I'm supposed to be even it. hotter, so it's gonna be a particular, My particularly brave first. person. Yeah, yeah, I'll do it. You gonna do it? Yeah. I like hot stuff. I don't, you know, for a while I was trying to like level up and level up, but I was getting to the point where it was like damaging me when I was eating stuff. Like, I had gotten to like the habanero level where I was like, okay, I'm gonna try eating these like a little bit sometimes, you know? But it was just like, I just felt sick for <laughs> days afterwards <laughs> sometimes. It felt horrible. It's Good. one of the hottest yeah. sandias I've ever had. Is it, so it is a spicy one. Extremely hot. Dry yeah. ears. Maybe that's a factor. Wow. Oh, look at that. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're so nice. You're Thank you, Julie. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Although, from Julie what I understand, nice um, you want to go with the dairy products, right? To to cool off after after eating chili. Not Not necessarily water. The heat will return when you use water, but momentarily it, it helps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel like that moment was worth it for me. <coughs> Mike, did you have some sandia? Yeah, I've, I'm, I'm He's had the sandia. Oh um, wow. Were they these hot back in their, you know... Origin? Or origin, yeah. yes. Wow. Were they used, how were they used back then for... Well, you make sauces out of them and it reduces because you're adding other things to it, mm. uh, the heat a little bit, but, uh, th and then you use the sauce within the context of tortillas and other things that will absorb the heat and lower, lower it in terms of your experience of it. Mm. This dilution factor. Yeah. Ty, are you okay? I'm a little, yeah, <laughs> getting a little physical, you know. My eyes are watering. The sandia. Uh, it was, like, yeah. I thought that was going to be our nice medium step after the uh, 1904, which didn't have any heat at all that I could tell. And then you should have known it was only 10 years to World War One. Mm. <laughs> There's water. <laughs> mm. All right. All right. Well, Mike's going to try the lumbar. I really want to see this. That sounds like a lower back thing. Where I'm sorry, it's lumbre. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's this one right here. Oh, okay. It means light. Lumbre means light. Yes. All right. You want to try that? No. No, okay. <laughs> yeah. okay. You owe 50 bucks on chili peppers and you're not, oh no. Hey, I'm just a normal guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's not Superman. Okay. No. And you know, this one, this the, one the your ability to uh, take the heat has nothing to do with your uh, ethnic origin, hmm. your gender, or anything like that. It has to do with genetics. Really? Hmm. Well, you, just like with um, taste buds, we are born with capsaicin receptors. All mammals have capsaicin receptors. Interesting. And so the number of capsaicin receptors you have, if you have a lot of them, <coughs> you're not, not going to be able to take the heat. If you okay. have few of them, um, you'll be able to, um, like the woman on the YouTube video in India, squeezing um, 
super hot chili juice into her eyes. Oh my oh god. god. <laughs> so she was born without capsaicin receptors. Wow. <laughs> That's not fair. Her eye even without it, I would think. And uh, there are people like that. And the, your friends who can eat the super hot sauces were born with very few capsaicin receptors. Now, what about. Um, it's like super tasters and non tasters mm -hmm. um, with um, taste buds. Now, what about desensitization? Does, does yeah, that, that actually occur? Or? It does occur. You, you can get accust accustomed to it. And I'm accustomed to medium hot chilies. And if you give me hot chilies, it happens like I'm doing now. <laughs> I'm hiccuping. Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, <coughs> my eyes are watering. Oh, no. And my nose is running. Yeah. Yeah. It's so. Uh, and that. You know, it has I, nothing I, to do with your being, you know, a tough guy or right, something yeah, like that. Course, yeah, it's, it's just, it, it's, yeah, it's yeah, just genetically. Yeah, it's all yeah. genetic. I can't That's believe they right. sell that. You know, right. I honestly think it, it's hitting me hard, but it, I think it's um, about as spicy as, as the San Diego. Now, here's another thing I've so, noticed with New Mexico chili. Wildly inconsistent, huh. Yeah. even according huh. to what it's supposed to be. Like, I have certainly had chili that was considered like a medium hot, that I swear That's the was environmental hotter. factors I was That's talking about. That's the environmental about. factor. Uh, yeah, um, and uh, it, it will really surprise you. Um, I had some enchiladas at um, Abelita's restaurant in the South Valley, about mm -hmm. three miles from where I live, and the enchiladas were so hot that I asked the server if the chef had put habaneros in them. Mm -hmm. And no, no, we only use New Mexico chilies. This is just an extremely hot batch. Yeah. It wasn't supposed to be this hot. And uh, so that's what happens. Okay. And that's, you know, uh, yeah, one of the reasons we love chilies is you right. never know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah Mike, exactly. Mike, how are you doing? It's good. That one is definitely hot. Definitely hot, but yeah. not as hot as the San Diego? I think it's like at least equally hot. Okay. It's, like, okay, it's so kind of we, on the same level, yeah. We kind of. I think you all can handle this, but it. Catapult. You know, cumulatively, when you eat hot on top of hot, you <laughs> kind of feel it, like expanded yeah. a little bit sometimes. I think I'm going to let my uh, my palate rest for a few minutes. I I feel like we need to address the uh, the elephant in the room of the summer of uh, 2019, Colorado chili. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Look at huge controversy, scandal, politics, sniping <clears throat> back and forth. What's the deal with that? It's um, like um, it's, it's like different parts of the United States saying that they are the, the chili capital of the world. Yeah. It's the same thing. Um, these uh, uh, Pueblo chilies, they're, mm -hmm. as they're called, uh, the, the variety they grow up, up in Pueblo was actually developed um, by Roy Nakayama at New Mexico State. Okay. And he gave, he gave them... <laughs> To a friend uh, that was growing, <laughs> <laughs> and these are Mirasol chilies. These chilies have the pods that are erect rather than drooping. Interesting. Huh. And so Mirasol means looking at the sun. Mm -hmm. And so the Coloradans are doing a lot, a lot of this kind of thing, saying uh, the New Mexico chilies look at the dirt, oh. our chilies look at the sun. Dang, that seems low. low. That's low. Yeah. I know, but still, it's part of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Now, I grew, uh, my friend T.J. Trout, who's now on, uh, uh -huh. um, you know, KOB Radio. Yeah, he's still on ninety-four point one. He was ES on ninety-four Rock for twenty-five years. He retired, got bored, accepted a job back in New Mexico, moved back to New Mexico. He's living in Cleveland, and uh, so because of this controversy. Um, I decided that I would grow Pueblo chilies, and then we'd compare them and have a taste test. We did this okay. last month, and um, I grew them exactly like any of the Mexican varieties, and we tasted them on the air, and they were horrible. Oh, wow. They had Aww. virtually no flavor, had very little heat, and oh. we couldn't understand why they were so excited about them up there, and I said, well, I have now found that I have a saline soil, so maybe maybe oh. that had something to do with it. But um, they were grown right next to the ones that we tasted, the New Mexico chilies, and the New Mexico chilies tasted normal. Huh. So I don't know. I, that's One test does not, you know, um, prove anything. Huh. And it's impossible, as far as I can tell, to find Pueblo-grown Pueblo chili in New Mexico. Like, or Pueblo-grown chili products. Huh. Yeah. And so I did some research. That's what I do. 
Mm -hmm. I found that the total crop of um, was about well, they only grow seven hundred acres. Really, that's yeah. tiny, right? Yeah, that's, a, that's a crazy compared small. to ten thousand that we have in New Mexico. <laughs> yeah, so you did an ad campaign based on that. That's crazy. <laughs> and they get sold all over Colorado. <laughs> but it's just sold. focused <laughs> in the Pueblo area. Yeah. Really? Mm, yeah. Interesting. Almost all the growers are from the Pueblo area, and they have a uh, Pueblo um, Chili and Frijoles festival that dwarfs the Hatch Chili Festival. Really? Yeah. So they, they got a lot of flash and fire, but not so much. Not so much production. Product. Production. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So and Hatch is a pretty small festival. I went to that once. I was surprised by how it's just basically like a few rides. And it's a county fair. Yeah. It's really yeah. it's really small. Yeah. And uh, I don't mean to disparage them. They don't like me anyway because I. <laughs> Yeah. I just say there's, a, there's no such thing as a hatch chili. Uh, That's all I'm saying, which is true. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, um, roast. And I, it's as far as I'm concerned, the Colorado thing is just a bunch of hype. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And show me the products. Show me. Right. Uh, show me a jar of uh, bottled, um, you know, pueblo chili. So I can't find it. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Show me. I, a, show I me a salsa, it. manufactured salsa. Uh, that, that has those chilies in. Probably the stuff at Trader Joe's. That stuff's weak. <laughs> Maybe. You know? Oh, yeah. Like, they is there a the yeah. bottle opener? Yeah. No, I don't. Yeah, didn't you say a chili from Hatch is a Hatch chili? And only that is a Hatch chili? Well, the thing is, is that there's no Hatch Valley. There is a little town of Hatch, but um, they're, they actually grow more alfalfa than chilies in Hatch. Yeah. And so, um, yes, you could, you could say it was a Hatch chili, but you could also say that what we just tasted was a Los Lunas chili. Mm. That's what I mean about the, right. the nomenclature being yeah. all screwed up on chilies. Interesting. Is it true that uh, the reason we say chili peppers is because of Columbus misidentifying uh, chili plants with pepper plants? That's part of it. Oh. Um, and we, we say uh, chili peppers to avoid the confusion between chili con carne. Oh, oh, and oh, so oh. it's redundant to say chili pepper, because but you're also using a Spanish word and an English word um, as a phrase. Oh, interesting. So chili interesting. being Spanish and pepper being English. Interesting. Uh, uh, and people say, well, that's redundant. Well, yeah, but it's also very descriptive mm -hmm. um, and specific. Huh. So and because pepper also means black pepper, right? You're now right. saying this is a. <laughs> Not a spice, it's a food. Yeah. Oh. It's a food that's sometimes used as a spice when it's dried and ground into a powder. It's amazing. But in reality, it's a food. Right. Because it, in, especially in the green form, and the red form fruit. too, it's, acti it's actually more of a food than it is a spice. Yeah, it's got it's a very it's meaty. A, yeah. Yeah. So. Um, I love it in every form. Would you care for one of these green chili beers? Dave? I've had that kind of green chili beer, and I don't like it. Okay. Well. <laughs> so, I'm not sorry. tasting the green chili. Well, I certainly am not after <laughs> eating some green yeah, chili. Yeah, maybe I'm that's thinking it. that's the issue here. Is it tastes very pilsnery. Um, it it does not stand up to uh, the sandia that we had. It, whatever <laughs> whatever chili flavor was in there has been just completely overwhelmed by uh, the chili, the actual chili that we ate. Well, maybe as I said, it. I've never seen a. Uh, mediocre, mediocre beer that was improved by chilies. <laughs> yeah. uh, the only yeah. beer that I've ever had that I liked with chili in it was one I brewed myself that was a very dark beer oh. with green yeah. chili. Did you share that around? I, I did, that yeah. Was really good. I was really happy with it. Um, but the only ones that I ever see for sale are light beers with yeah. chili, and I right. feel like that's a mistake. Um, um, would you talk a little bit about the difference between green and red chili? It's the same chili, right? Yes. Um, <laughs> it's just a mature... It's a mature. <laughs> fruit. It's it's a, a, it's a fruit that matures red, and we're eating it in the immature form with green chili. But it loses its heat, right? No, it gains it... heat. It gains oh, heat. Oh, oh. what? It's it's, what? it's more mature. Why? Wow. I feel like red chili. You know, when you ask for red at Garcia's or whatever, yeah. is less hot than it, the that's green. just that's or... just another one of those things that you you don't know where it was grown. Mm -hmm. um, you don't know exactly what variety of the chili turned red. Oh. I mean, if you if you asked for um, a red chili sauce made with sandia, you can imagine what that would be like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, no, thank you. Uh, in this particular case, it's a, it's a situation where um, you don't know um, 
the origin or the variety. And so it's really hard to say that green or red oh. is hotter than the other. Um, generally speaking, if, if you're talking about, say, say a big gym chili that turns red would be a little hotter than one that was green. Okay. But just because it's more mature. Um, also, um, most of the red chili comes from dehydrated material. And so you don't have the water that's in the, oh. it's in the fruit mm -hmm. to dilute any of the heat. So um, uh, that, that's another reason why red would be hotter if you're talking about just the same variety side by side in the garden. Um, and the red is, my favorite is what, what's right there, is that, you know, roasted and peeled fresh red. Rats, I yes. like, and the first time I ever made a sauce from it, it was so delicious that I sat down and ate it like a soup. Wow. Mm. 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 And uh, it was, it was not a, <laughs> not a very hot red chili, right? Mm -hmm. And so it made a perfect soup. I like to do that too. That's so good. And uh, yeah. So where does where does Chimayo fit into the like? A, is there is it a Chimayo variety of uh, of red, or is it a is it simply something that's grown in Chimayo? Like uh, I have here, a Chimayo <clears throat> blend. It says Chimayo did a smart thing, and they got a group of farmers together, and they applied for a plant patent. Aha. Uh -huh. um, and they received it. And so because of that plant, pat, plant patent, uh, no other uh, ma manufacturers of, of chili products can use the word huh. Chimayo okay. unless the people in Chimayo approve it. Mm -hmm. It had to be grown within the bounds of Chimayo. So it's not a different type of chili, it's just something that's grown it's, in it's Chimayo. It's a New Mexico, it it's, would be the same thing as the difference between, say, a Big Jim and a sandia. Okay. Um, it's it's a hotter variety of chili that's not sold green. Mm -hmm. It's only matured to, 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 to red and ground into a powder. Mm -hmm. Maybe there, there is one sauce that uses it now hmm. huh. called Simayo, T-S-I-M-A-Y-O. Yeah. Okay. It's the first, well, New, the Mexico, first New Mexico hot yeah. sauce. Um, yeah. This is really manageable. This, this the, the red, red stuff? Yeah. Right. Oh, really? It's not hot. There's a knife on the plate. Yeah. Oh, do you see that? Text? Just, yeah, I see it. Yeah, I'm <laughs> committed at this point, you know. It's like, I'm let's stop now. The trying chili to cut wins. this chili with a fork. There we go. It worked. Um, and you're eating what would be the mildest part of the chili, which is the, mm. the what they call the blossom end. It's super sweet. Blossom, pretty. Compared to the other. Yes, and that's oh, why really? I liked it in the soup. I think. Yeah, that's really good. Like. Again, we don't know the variety here because it was not labeled at the store, and I forgot to ask at the um, at the cashiers whether it was a particular variety, like what variety it was. Right. So, but boy, that's good. I love it. Actually, uh, yeah. I feel like I could happily. Killing this. I could eat a whole one of those. I think. Right. <laughs> Thanks. Well, you could take those and uh, um, put them in the blender. Put them in a pot, heat them up, and make a good soup or a sauce. Okay. I'm gonna try this uh, loom right now. Oh, nice! Oh, nice! Hi. Good for you. I'm, I'm brave I'm now. You. I've uh, finally yeah. oh, yeah. kind of come back around. Yeah. We're supposed to suffer a little bit. That's the idea. Well, of I the think show. that's There's the no more ice cream. <laughs> now, uh, Dave, I saw that you were on a MythBusters episode. What, uh, what myth were you busting? Uh, the cool down factor myth. Okay. And they were they were going to see whether or not dairy products really did um, cut the heat of chili peppers. And do they? Yes. All right, and I feel like we and the we, thicker the better. I mean, milk is, you know, two percent milk is ninety-eight percent water. Uh -oh. uh -huh. So um, we're talking about ice cream like this. Yeah, uh, we're talking about um, half and half. <laughs> half and half would be better. Um, uh, we're also talking about cream. Oh yeah. And uh, uh, yogurt. Mm. Now, a red's barely barely spicy at all. It's, yeah, it's sweet. No, we've. Uh, little, I little feel little like bite. there's a lot of talk about how to uh, cool down the mouth after uh, after biting into a pepper, uh, but in my experience, there's actually a more difficult issue to address, which typically occurs about twelve hours later. Oh yeah. How do you deal with that? I, that's a. I'm geez, sorry to I'm mention it, but that's a serious, <laughs> tough thing to deal with. I've, I've never. I've never had. <laughs> a problem. You so, have not. Okay, no. well, I'm dragging you. us into the gutter. <laughs> I, I think that has to do with individuals. We're being real here, man. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, what are you, are you looking for, like, a dairy suppository? <laughs> you? you know, there have been times where I would take whatever I could get. That's all I'm saying. If there was some <laughs> secret remedy, then I want to know about it. All right, Man. I'm going to try this. Oh, Ty, that's such a huge bite. Mm. <sighs> Live life to the fullest. Oh. <coughs> Good Lord, Mike. Um... You're killing me with that coughing. <laughs> it, it goes no. right into oh, the. Sorry, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Like, and oh, sorry, right. listeners. No tie to that. Okay. Um. I have a question about. <laughs> oh. or do you Go ahead. Yeah, okay. I'm just I'm gonna say this As is hardly hot it. at all right now. Maybe uh. we just had a really hot. This one was. Really the San Diego. That was. I think that's the one that hurt the most, honestly. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's that one. Yeah. Should we just keep eating this stuff, like, and see if we? Oh, you have the gain um, powers. This is theoretically the lumbre at this point. Uh, but it's hardly hot. I kind of want to keep eating these. But Go right ahead. Yeah. Eat all you want. Well, I got this bag of stuff, too. Maybe I should try these. But yeah. I don't even know what these are. Those look like uh, habaneros. No. Yeah, they, these are habaneros. Uh. Uh, yeah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> but it says New Mexico ground. They, yeah, sure. Yeah. Do anything here. It's the <laughs> variety, right? <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, no, that's right. Um, so, Dave, before you were the Pope of Peppers, this is this is a non-chili related <laughs> question. All right. You were once known as Captain Space, That's and true. I need to know <laughs> about this. I saw it in your bio. I think I've seen it mentioned. I saw That's a photograph of you as Captain Space. Right. So this is back in the 70s? Yes, it was in uh, 70, 76, 1976. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, uh, pitched uh, KOAT. Um, a situation um, of having my own TV show and uh, they had um, a deal with um, various th uh, uh, people who supplied uh, horror movies and science fiction movies to uh -huh. the station and they would just run them and I thought it would be more fun to mock them and yeah. uh, um, you know, the creature from the Black Lagoon and stuff like this. Right, right. And uh, so uh, I pitched them a deal where I would buy the time from them, mm. sell my own spots in the show. Okay. And so I would be brokering uh, a show so that myself and my good friend, Wayne Shiner, who's now my advertising agency, ah. um, would have, um, we'd have fun and make some money. And, and so, so I, I had to buy the time from them and go resell the time to sponsors um, to make it work. Mm -hmm. And I think we <clears throat> managed to make maybe $100 a week. Yeah. And s something like that. Which it sounds in like in 1976 Science. was not, I mean, it's pay some bills and yeah, you know, buy some chilies to eat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you had. Yeah, it sounds it, like Mystery Science Theater before Mystery Science Theater 3000. Right, right. It's and uh, the thing is, is that our original show, uh, we, we wrote um, a song for the intro, which Wayne sang, and it had Captain Space landing in an egg. Yeah. And um, Mork and we Mindy. Were, yeah, exactly. Oh. Yeah. And when Mork and Mindy came out, they copied us. No kidding. Hey. So you predated Mork and Mindy. I was yes. wondering. I was reading the description. And I was and, like, and, uh, Mork and Mindy -ish. Uh, That's how Mork came to Earth. Right. right. I remember. Um, and so. Um, we we just we love the fact that they did that. Mm -hmm. We just we thought, God, you know, that's just great. <laughs> is it? Are there still? Uh, is there any footage remaining from uh, from Captain Space? No, the station. Uh, uh, this was <coughs> the days prior to home VCRs. Right. And so um, uh, they would tape over the previous yeah. incident. Oh, yeah, oh man. Know. Yes, and so we have no footage. All we have are still photos that were shot on the sets That's and cool. so forth like that. But um, It makes it legendary, though. It's this lost work of art that influenced all <laughs> well, the future shows. Uh, I mean, we would, we would uh, uh, write the scripts, um, and they were pre-taped, and um, we would be um, drinking scotch and smoking dope. <laughs> while we wrote the scripts, <laughs> and uh, and then uh, we go the in. <laughs> so most of the time we were semi stoned when mm. when the recording went on. Oh, okay. But uh, we had such a blast, um, and people really liked it. <laughs> I would start off the sh every show by reading the hate mail, <laughs> and reminding people <laughs> that on other stations, at the same time that we were on the air, there was um, 
uh, Saturday Night Live, and uh, <laughs> Star Trek. Yeah, okay. Some Please switch over. Pretty, pretty well regarded. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and we beat them both in the Arbitron ratings. That's hilarious. Oh, yes. my goodness. And uh, uh, I, I would just read the hate mail. Um, and it, there was always hate mail. And I said, you don't have to watch me. There's not a requirement by law that you have to watch this show. You definitely don't have to write a letter. If you don't like it, just watch something else. <laughs> yes, I, I know the I know the impulse. We've we've read a few. Uh, I think we've only had one one star review, but we did yeah. wind up reading it. Yeah. Uh, it's it's like, it's it's a strange thing to write a one star review for something that you're in no way required to yeah. you know right. <laughs> partake. Go out of your way. Um, and I, these were real. Uh, you know, letters, yeah. physical letters. Right. And I, I told over to the camera and see, this is a real letter. This person wow, is saying this. that must have been the 70s. But if you hate it so I've much, heard of those. Well, why are you torturing yourself? You know? Were they delivered by Pony Express? <laughs> U.S. Mail. <laughs> to Captain Space, care of KOAT. Captain K-O-A-T. Space, that's so cool. You know, all that kind of stuff. All so, right. um, you know, you know, what it gave me was a lot of on-camera experience, yeah. which I've used many, many times. I've been on Martha Stewart. Yeah, you know, wow. and uh, uh, I could I could do the things that newscasters can do, and you know you, they tell tell you you have thirty five seconds to do it, and they're giving you hand cues of the yeah. seconds. So mm-hmm. I could wrap it up to the second. Nice. And I did that on Martha Stewart, as a matter of fact, live. Wow, in front of millions of That's viewers. Awesome. Yeah. And, yeah. and the, the, the director didn't believe I could do it. Yeah, and, and, and she, and she said, "There's no way you can bring it in." I said, "Just give me." hand signals of yeah, yeah. the number of seconds wow. I could do it to the second and I did and she said oh we're going to have you back you're the greatest and blah 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 and she got cancelled the next week <laughs> oh no Aww. did she go to jail the next week Is that the no no okay. she's already been in jail uh. and I, that's why I like her so much yeah. um, because she was just she was just down home normal person was yeah. she really? And yeah she had had a bulldog that followed her around the, the studio and that bulldog had busted her lip she had Went down to pet the dog, and the dog went like that. Yep. And she had um, a, a swollen uh, lip with a, a blood thing here. It was, you know, it was yeah. dried, but um, and she didn't put any makeup on it or anything. Wow! And she like, just okay. said, "My dog hit me in the in the <laughs> mouth with his head." That's and uh, and, uh, and we just it. went on. That was the way it was. I love it. And uh, I talked to a lot of her employees. When I was on the set, they all loved her. Yeah, and they weren't cool. faking or doing anything like that because I wasn't directly asking, "Do you like Martha Stewart?" They were just talking about her, and the way they were talking about her showed how much they loved her. Wow, and uh, that's cool. That was a yeah. great experience. Um, you know, when she that's cool. formed the friendship with Snoop Dogg, it yeah. made me like both of them so much better. I oh yeah, like, yeah. Really yeah. Cool. I can see her doing that though because you know, um, when she was in in jail, she was helping her fellow inmates yeah. in any way they could. They were, yeah. She was teaching them how to cook, how to sew, you know, all this kind of stuff, and they loved her. Yeah. I mean, wow. and because she never whined and moaned and complained or made a big deal about it. She said, I did something wrong, I got caught, I'm being punished, it'll be over. Oh, cool. That's the only magazine I pay for, Martha Stewart Living, and now <laughs> I feel justified. In oh, 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 Martha Stewart's <laughs> great. She was great. And... Uh, um, she should do an article on. New we, it, we had the hardcover chili. edition of the yeah. Complete Chili Pepper book out. You should write it. And you should have seen the sales that yeah. resulted from that. You know, I thought. Wow. I probably made a huge. couple of thousand dollars for that appearance nice. just in book sales. All right. It was. It was fun. I got to go to New York to a fancy studio, um, treated like a star. It was great. Nice. You've had a cool, cool life. Yeah. Yeah. Green, I, was, yeah, yeah. I was in the green room and all that kind of stuff. You know? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. The and they whole. were saying, "Can we get you anything?" I said, "No, no." I don't, I don't drink you know, making an appearance, which I don't. Yeah. Uh, except today, I had a little, a little bit green chili wine, <laughs> and you're like, yeah, oh, yeah. That's part of the job. That's part of the job today. But uh, I love doing all that stuff, and I've been on the Today Show, um, and yeah, a bunch of other national wow. TV shows. It's Very been cool. fun. Um, yeah. That is so cool. And you wrote all the chili, and and I suppose you wrote hard work and perseverance, <laughs> well, and creativity, that. but <laughs> um, you know. I used to do radio and TV commercials, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, stand up on TV doing a, a TV spot is difficult to do. And uh, 
but all these appearances gave me confidence in having my own mm -hmm. TV show. So I, you know, I did that until my hair fell out. Yeah. <laughs> then they didn't want me anymore. Oh. oh. <laughs> wow. Now you have to become a super villain. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Captain Space's nemesis. Yeah. Um, what's the what is this pepper here? It's a serrano. Serrano. What like what are they just another variety? It's not yeah, it's it's uh, you know similar to a jalapeno, but I think they're better than jalapenos. Now, do these all come from the same type of pepper? Like prior to the uh, New Mexico Number no. Nine, if we keep following, obviously, I guess some. Those are varieties of of a pod type. And uh, like for example, the jalapenos, this is jalapeno, it's a pod type. The serrano is a pod type. Uh -huh. The habanero is a pod type. Uh -huh. And then they have varieties within the pod types. Right. And so uh, there's probably commercially five or six uh, habanero varieties uh -huh. within the pod type. Oh, wow. Of, of <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude, my. That one was hot. I'm sorry. You just <laughs> ate that whole thing. Was that a serrano that you ate? Yeah. Milk? yeah. Yeah, there's milk here. Oh. You want some? I took a milk, yeah. Thank you. That one. <laughs> <laughs> like it, the way I would explain it is, if everything we've eaten here was treble, this was bass. Like it was oh. kind of like a deeper, lower register. Interesting. It, it hit me in a different, like broader way. Okay. Nice but, description. But uh, yeah, it kind of. But I wasn't expecting that. It was like <laughs> well, <laughs> hit you in the we, gut instead yeah. of the mouth. Caps, capsaicin yeah. is a generic term for um, about six or seven different capsaicinoids that have um, these attack the mouth in different ways. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some attack the front of the tongue, oh. some attack the back mm -hmm. of the mouth, some come on very fast, some come on delayed. Mm -hmm. um, and so it all depends on the combination of capsaicinoids mm -hmm. uh, that are in the particular chili pepper. So it gets scientific that's and amazing. fairly complicated to, right. to do that. Wow. And uh, that's what you just experienced, what mm -hmm. I was just talking about. It hit mm -hmm. you in a different mm -hmm. part of the mouth. Right, right. So, um, and serranos are, um, Probably ten to fifteen thousand Scoville heat units, where mm -hmm. jalapenos max out at about five thousand oh, Scoville wow. heat units. Oh, so that's hotter than a jalapeno. Is it? Okay, yeah, sure. they are. And generally speaking, the smaller the chili, the hotter it is. Oh, oh. It, it, around the that board. That's, that's just concentrated. Good to know. You just explain bell yeah. peppers. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> bell peppers were actually um, bred from poblano peppers mm -hmm. in Mexico, and they just kept breeding them until they get rid of all the heat. Yeah. Okay. It they changed the shape too. Yeah, yeah. They got a blocky shape to them. Right. Yeah. And uh, stuff them full of stuff and not get. But poblanos are not that hot. But any kind of chili, if it's concentrated, mm -hmm. and you know when you talk about chili sauces and these kinds of sauces, yeah, they're they're not pure chilies. There's a base that they put to these sauces, right. uh, like uh, carrots or mm. um, mm. something like that, and then they add the chilies to the base. Oh. And sometimes it's tomatoes. Sometimes it's carrots. It could be anything. Mm. Um, and so, um, wow. if you if you took red chilies and concentrated them that much, uh, that or all chilies, it'd be extremely hot. Right. But it w won't be if if they have other non-heat yeah, ba uh, base sure. to yeah. it. Yeah. The second ingredient in that is orange juice, water and orange juice. What a wow. isn't that funny? See, that is the, that's the base that they're using. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then when you alter the base, and they um, food manufacturing is an incredibly interesting science. Um, uh, and these people are are geniuses who who, who do this kind of stuff. Mm. But they've got every kind of um, laboratory equipment that you ever need yeah, to right. detect flavors and um, and heat levels and all that kind of stuff. How do you okay. think about what do you think about chili tastes with um, like sweet things like like uh, uh, like chocolates? Yeah, like scoopies. Chilies and chocolates and go back to the Aztecs, so. Huh. That's a pretty established. Yeah, that's a yeah, thing. Good, call. Um, good call. Never mind. Yeah, <laughs> the, the early hot chocolates yeah. did not have anything sweet in them. Huh. Um, they were they were. Um, uh, it's, it was just cacao and chili peppers, um, really? pounded together, or or uh, heated up together, um, and then the only the only source of uh, sugar that the Aztecs had was honey. Uh, okay. So, um, and honey was not used in hot chocolate yeah. back in those days. Uh, just didn't do it. It was just the bitter, bitter, bitter yeah. chocolate. Yeah. Well, wow. I feel like we should 
probably wrap up. But yeah. thank you thank so you for much up for uh, yeah, this was fun. Stuff. I like yeah, doing this. <laughs> I uh, really appreciate you coming. Yeah, and, uh, thank you for sharing your knowledge. Your knowledge so, is when rad. is the uh, Fiery Foods Festival happening? Um, it's February 28th through March 1. Okay, and that's here at in Albuquerque at the San Diego Resort Center. Oh, at the San Diego Resort okay. Casino. Right. Okay. Right. right. We've been there for 13 years now. Oh, okay. And you've got a book coming out. Uh, when was that happening? Uh, about a year from now, maybe maybe August of 2020. All right. Um, and that's from uh, University of New Mexico Press, and it's, and it's called Chili Peppers: A World History. Okay. I can't Great. wait to get that. It has recipes in it too, but the recipes are. I, I, I'm not trying to make a cookbook here. I'm just yeah. trying to use the recipes as an Ooh. historical. As a con yeah, yeah context. Yeah. yeah, the right kind of context. So they're that's pretty cool. much classic recipes, traditional recipes oh. from around the world. Well, thank you again so yeah. much. Okay. And, thank you. Uh, speak to you again sometime soon, I hope. Yeah, um, well, yeah. Um, we'll talk back. more I, chili. I know about other things, too. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs>